Hey guys, hope you're having a great weekend. Today we're gonna to be talking web frameworks. A web framework is anything that lets you build a web application. What is a web application? A web application is anything you can access on the internet. And what is the internet? Well, the internet is a series of pipes and tubes. Uh, okay, web frameworks, let's get started. Everyone and their mother wants to be on the internet and for good reason, right? So if you wanna be on the internet or build anything that goes online, we have to understand what a web application is and how to use a web framework. Every single popular programming language has a bunch of web frameworks that you can use. Ruby the language has Ruby on Rails or Rails as a really popular framework. Python has Django and the list just continues. In this video, we're talking about four, four basic things that web frameworks provide that you have to understand. The only reason a web framework exists is so you, as a developer, do not have to reinvent the wheel. Many people have been working on the internet for a while now and you do not have to write a lot of things from scratch. Point number one is URL routing. When you're building a complicated website or web application, you're gonna support many different URLs besides your homepage. What happens when we go to this URL? Now again, what happens when we go to that URL? You already know what a URL is, but when you build your web application, you define exactly what URLs you're gonna support. So how do you define good patterns to use when you're organizing all these URLs? How do you define which code gets hit when a particular URL gets hit? URL routing facilitates this. It's a basic feature provided in many web frameworks and it just dispatches every single request for you. Second point is database manipulation. Every single web application, if it's smart at all, will store some amount of data in a database. It could be user accounts, silly comments on the forums you read, and even this video that we're watching right now is stored in a database somewhere. Web frameworks allow us to manipulate and design these databases. How do you structure your tables and models? How are different things related to each other? How do you write to stuff and read different entries in your database? It's all bundled up nicely for you so you don't really have to get into the nitty gritty details of the database. All you have to do is use some of the features in the web framework and you can do probably 80 to 90% of what you really need to do. Third point is templating. What do we mean by templating? Well, templating is simply organizing the data that your web application returns. Every single web application must return data of some kind. The most popular being probably HTML for all the websites you go through in your browser, but web apps could also return data like JSON or raw XML. Imagine all the HTML, all the variations of HTML that one web application has to return. Besides google.com, which is super simple, this kind of data output can get really, really, really hairy really fast. Templating, it's simply the ability to let you organize this data output better. It allows you to separate out components, reuse different modules, Here's my header of the web page. Here's my footer of the web page. Here's the body of the web page. It could structure that HTML output for you. And remember, the data that your web application returns doesn't necessarily have to be HTML. That's just one type of data. Fourth and last point about web frameworks is that they provide basic security. Putting stuff on the internet, as we know, is really dangerous. There's some mean people out there trying to steal your credit cards or steal your family photos. Not only people sitting there hacking your computer, but these guys write programs to automatically try to infiltrate, crawl the web, and hack into your computers. Chances are you're not really a security expert and you probably don't want to become a security expert. So if you put something on the internet, you'll get a basic level of security if you use a web framework. Security is one of those really, really important things that nobody wants to work on because they think it's silly until their application 
gets hacked, then it's... If you are a software developer and you're watching this video, I think there's a high chance that you might want to build something that goes on the internet. To do this well, we have to understand what the internet is, first of all. I have a video on that, so you can check that out later. But we also must understand what a web application is and what web frameworks provide us. Every single web framework out there, and there are tons of them for every single language you can think of, they all provide these basic characteristics. Some are good, some are bad, some have these features, some don't have those features. The whole point of this video was to give you a basic introduction and understanding of web frameworks and what they provide for you. Let's just recap them really quick. One is URL routing. Where the hell do all these URLs go and what code gets hit? Second is database manipulation. Don't worry about the details, just save stuff. Third is templating, organizing and putting patterns to all that data you return, whether that be HTML or raw data. And fourth is basic security measurements. You're not a security expert, so use a web framework and get some level of safety. If you haven't checked out my How the Internet Works video, please check that out as well. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment down here, please. Thumbs up the video if you liked it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week with some more knowledge. All right, take care and have a great week.